In the last lesson, I showed how to use dictionaries, that is, lists of paired key value elements. The key provides a way to look up the value that's associated with it. When you want to get at some value in an array, you use an index. When you want to get at a value in a dictionary, you use a key. An array has a fixed numerical order, a dictionary doesn't, or at least you shouldn't rely upon it having an order. In the last lesson, I showed how to use strings as keys and room objects as values. I want to find the cave room object so I can enter the string cave. Now that sounds easy enough, but there is a problem. It's very easy to make a mistake when entering a string. Even if I get the case of a single character wrong, say by entering cave with a lowercase initial, my code won't find the cave room because the key won't be recognised. I'm Hugh and you're watching a lesson in my complete adventure game programming course. Up to now, in order to get a value from a dictionary, I use this syntax, putting the key between square brackets, in the same way I put a number between square brackets when indexing into an array. This has the virtue of simplicity, but it doesn't give me any help if I make a mistake by entering a key that doesn't exist. To help deal with errors like that, C Sharp has another way of indexing into a dictionary. I have to use the try get value method. If the key is found, its associated value is returned as the out argument. The method itself returns a Boolean value, true or false. If it finds the key, it returns true. If it can't find the key, it returns false. I can test that Boolean value, as I do here, to display an error message if the key wasn't found in the dictionary. So cave with a capital C works, but cave with a lowercase c isn't found, and this message is displayed. However, I don't really want to risk errors like that at all. So now I'm going to take measures to prevent them. Instead of using strings as the keys, I've decided to use predefined constants. I've created this enum, which is a set of constants grouped together. The enum is called rm, and each constant represents a specific room in the game. I've also defined no exit to indicate that there is no room in a specific direction. Now when I create rooms, I can use one of those enumerated constant identifiers to represent an exit, and I can find the room at that exit by using the enum name, such as rm.trollroom, to get the room object itself from the map dictionary. Now that you have a basic understanding of how I plan to create a dictionary of room objects, why not see if you can figure out the rest for yourself? See if you can write your own game with a map that's a dictionary, where the value of each key value pair is a room object. Now, here are a few things to bear in mind. Every element in a dictionary is a key value pair. It's up to you to decide which data types to use. These might be integers, strings, or user defined objects. For our purposes, when creating a map, the value needs to be a room object. For the key, you could use a string or a constant. The key must be unique. If the key cave occurs once in the dictionary, it cannot occur again. The values, however, may be repeated. Most object-oriented languages have dictionaries of some sort, and some languages have a variety of dictionary classes, and you may need to study the language documentation to help you decide on exactly which type of dictionary would be the best to use. In Java, the HashMap class is similar to C Sharp's dictionary class. Java has a dictionary class, but that's not recommended as it's been superseded by HashMap. In other languages, dictionaries may be called maps, hashes, hash maps, or associative arrays. Be sure to check the documentation of the class you are using. Dictionaries or hashes usually come with a lot of useful methods to get keys and values, to check if a key exists, to return a list of all available keys, and so on. Anyway, that's enough information to be going on with for this lesson. If you have a go at making a dictionary of rooms, you'll need to make sure that the code used to move the player around the game uses your dictionary to find a new room at the exit of the current room whenever the player moves. I'll go through my own code in more detail in the next lesson. If you haven't watched the previous lessons in this course, you can find them all in order in the playlist shown beneath this video. As always, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, do so now 
and click the bell to be notified whenever I upload new lessons.